Hey, I'm Eric of Spensley Design Co. and welcome to our apartment wood shop. All right, welcome in. Let's close this door, that way we can get a look at everything. Well, I guess this is busted, but we live in apartments, so let's call maintenance. So the very first part of the shop is the jig wall here. So we have everything from our joiner and taper sled, our router flattening jig, and our turning jig. And over on this wall, I also like to store the templates. Now, as you can see, I only have one, but six inches is all you need sometimes. So moving on further down this wall, I have all the stuff that I grab fairly regularly. I have all of our glue bottles, I have all of our different size squares, and then I have a water bottle that I like to dip rags in to clean up any glue squeeze out. Then one of the other questions I've seemed to get fairly often is why I wear my hearing protection even when I'm not doing anything loud. That's because these are the 3M work tunes that actually have Bluetooth connectivity, so I can hook it up to my iPad over there and listen to music while I'm working. Oh, and these $1.99 Harbor Freight safety glasses, super comfortable and cheap. And the last thing that we've got at the end of this wall is all of my different clamps and then our track saw track. Now all the clamps that you see here, with the exception of these four Bessie clamps, are actually all Harbor Freight clamps. They're pretty cheap. Uh, these 12 inch ones are like $3, so it's good bang for your buck. However, the clamping pressure is really low, so I really wouldn't recommend them. And we're working on replacing all of our clamps right now. Now down below our clamps, I store some of our other clamping accessories. The first things that we have here are strap clamps, which we don't use very often, but we do use sometimes. And then I also keep some call boards, which are basically just scrap pieces of wood covered in packing tape so the glue doesn't stick to them. And then I also have some wooden shims if I need to work on leveling anything out. And the last thing that we have on this wall are our saw horses and then our circular saw guide. That's the guide that you'll see me use in the parking lot at the home center to break down all of our sheet goods so they can fit in our Honda Civic. And that's because for some reason, if you're like me, your home center saw is always broken. Doesn't make any sense. So this back wall is something you're probably more familiar with seeing. This is where I like to store all my small scrap pieces of wood that I might need to grab during a project and also where I house our mobile workbench. Now, if you've been following us from the very beginning, you know that we actually didn't start out in the shop. We started out in the parking lot of our apartment. Surprisingly, our neighbors never complained about it, but what I had to do is roll this cart inside and outside every single time I wanted to work on something and Let's just say a garage is a lot easier than doing that. And the other side of the shelves here is where I like to store a lot of the larger tools that I use more often. So we've got our domino, the dominoes themselves, and the track saw. And this area of the shelf is kind of like my home base. I've got my drills, I got my iPad for my music, um, some water, and I also keep my circular saw here. And then over here is where I keep a lot of the larger pieces of sheet goods as well as the massive crosscut sled that we built. Oh. Yeah, I'll get a wire in this mic. Oh! All right, that's better. And so you're probably thinking to yourself, hey Eric, doesn't it get really hot in a garage in the summer? And yes, it does. And that's why you need to invest in a super expensive air conditioning unit, like this $20 fan. Now, before we get to where the magic happens, 
let me talk about something real quick. Now I know a lot of people are gonna be really weirded out of why I have tools like the track saw and the domino that are three to four times as much as my table saw. And that's because this is something that I started out with. This is my very first table saw and I bought it because it was super portable. Once I realized that I really wanted to get into this stuff, I started only buying stuff that I knew that I was gonna keep for a long period of time. So yeah, a domino is over a thousand dollars, but it's not something that I'm ever really gonna need to upgrade. And so you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just upgrade your table saw now? That brings me to my next point. Let's look above. So the reason that I'm not upgrading a lot of tools right now is because of this. We have one single 15 amp outlet. We really can't use a whole lot of tools here. And if you watched our pallet wood coffee table video, you know that we actually blew the breaker while we were trying to flatten that table. We then started the long and messy task of flattening the table. Everything was going great as we run in our router over the table until... Oh no way, you've got to be kidding me. We blew the breaker. So we have to be really careful with all the tools that we're using because one, we're not actually allowed to woodwork in here. So we have to kind of be discreet about it. And two, if we do blow a breaker, we have to contact maintenance and then who knows how long that's gonna take. So with one 15 amp outlet up here, I would love to have a saw saw table saw, but I can't run 220 volt outlets out here. So I don't think there's really any reason to upgrade my table saw when it's gonna be something that I don't really like once I move out of the shop. What we're trying to do right now is basically upgrade what we can and then anything that we require 220 volt power for, we're gonna wait until we move out of the shop. Oh, and while we're talking about stuff up on the ceiling, we also have our DIY air purifier and up in the rafters is where we hold a lot of stuff like these slabs up there. Now over here, we have our portable table saw. And this sits on top of our table saw cart that has all these drawers that pull out that have things like push sticks and then where we keep all of our screw bins down here. And right on the other side of the table saw, we have our shop back that's hooked up to this dust deputy cyclone. And that's pretty much our only dust collection for this entire shop and it's not very good. But I guess it's better than not having anything at all. And on the other end of the workbench is where we have all of our bays of drawers. We have 10 drawers on this side and then 10 drawers on the opposite side. And each of these have compartments inside where you can hold all kinds of different supplies. And then the newest addition to our shop is this lumber rack that I put right up above the garage door. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the video.